Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome to my new coding tutorial series. So in this series, hopefully I'll be taking you from not knowing how to code at all, to being able to code your own bots on Discord. So for this series, we're going to be using Discord JS version 13. This coding series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is an easy to use application that allows you to earn money while you're not using your computer. Salad uses your computer's graphics card to mine cryptocurrency and allows you to redeem rewards such as Discord Nitro, Visa gift cards, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Salad is an official Discord partner with a Discord server of over 40,000 members. With almost 900,000 people already using Salad, why not sign up today? Use code TDE2 for two times your earnings for a limited time only. Thank you to Salad for sponsoring this series. So the coding language that we're going to use for this series is JavaScript. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to go ahead and install Node.js. If you don't know what Node.js is, basically JavaScript was built to be used within the browser. So let's say making something animate on a web page or making a button as you click it run some code or something like that. That was all done through JavaScript. So what Node.js is, is basically taking JavaScript and allowing it to escape the browser. So this means then that we can have applications run on our own systems rather than inside of a browser and then they can power Discord bots like we'll be doing in this series. Obviously there's many other uses of JavaScript, but that's what we'll be sticking to in this series anyway. So download the version recommended for most users. After we have our Node.js, we want to get a text editor. So the one that I use is Visual Studio Code. So I'll drop this link in the description as well, and you can just download for Windows or Mac or whatever. So now that we have these installed, we're gonna go ahead and create our project. So I'm going to go and head into my file explorer and I'm going to open in Windows Terminal. So if you're not familiar with the terminal, it basically just lets you run commands. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is run the command npm in it, which basically means node package manager, which is what npm is, which comes bundled with Node.js, uh, initialize. So basically it means that we're setting up our folder to create a Node.js project. So you can just really click enter through all of these and we'll move on to the next. Uh, I'm going to fill the author in, but really it doesn't matter what you fill in there. Whatever is filled in there, it won't really matter. So now that we have the package set up in the folder, we'll get a package.json file, and that basically just stores whatever packages you download in there. So what we're actually going to be using npm for is to install the discord.js dependency. And a dependency just means that your code depends on it to run. So basically what we're doing is we're installing all of the things that a bot can do into this folder. So I'm going to do npm i for install and discord.js. So what I've done now is it's just going to install discord.js and we'll get a node modules folder. As you can see, there's quite a lot in here. These are just things that come default with node, but uh, and the requirements for discord.js. But if you head in here, you'll see this is the discord.js, what we'll be accessing throughout our code. So it is just a whole other JavaScript project that someone else has made, but just imported into our own. So what we're going to do now is in your terminal, you can just type code and then a dot. And what that means is it will open Visual Studio Code in this folder. So here we go. And you can just press yes, I trust the author since you've made the folder. So the first thing you want to do is right click over here in this little explorer box. If you don't see it, it's this little pages up here. Right click and make a new file and we're going to call it index.js. So now that we have our index.js file, this is where our main code for the project will go. So we're going to get into the coding side of things really in the next episode. So one final thing we want to do in this episode is head to discord.com slash developers slash applications. And you'll want to hit new application in here and give it a name, tutorial. And I'm going to add to my own personal team. Teams don't really matter unless you're working on a bot with a group of people where then you can make a team. But I'm just going to stick with personal. So what you want to do in here is head to the bot section on the left and click add bot. And what this will do then is basically add the bot to this application. So before you could use this application, let's say for logging in through Discord as you might see on some websites, but adding the bot to it now makes this application a bot application. So we'll have a token in here and we can copy that, head over to Visual Studio. And I'm just going to leave it in here for now at the top, but we'll need this later on. Don't share this token with anybody because this will give them access to be able to run things through your bot. So make sure you keep this safe. But that's all you need to do with the token for now. So one more thing we want to do in this episode is head back to the Discord page. And you'll see here, privileged gateway intents. 
So what I'm going to do for now is turn on the server member's intent. I'll explain what intents are in just a second, but just turn on the server member's intent for now. It should be all that we need. So let's talk about just a few definitions you might hear throughout the episodes, just to make them a bit clearer. So the first thing, obviously, is intents, as I just showed you. An intent is basically a way for your bot to receive specific information. So by turning on that server member's intent, that means that our bot will be able to access information about server members. And if you go back here, you can actually see there's also a message content intent, which is coming into force in April 30th, 2022. So in a few months. So what happens with that is basically bots will have to apply to Discord to be able to see messages, which is obviously a big flip for bots, especially even compared to my old coding series. So what we'll need to do is design a bot that doesn't specifically need user messages, but can take input through other ways. So we're going to be implementing something called slash commands within this coding series. So that will basically allow us to send commands to the bot without actually having to use messages specifically. So we'll talk about all that in later episodes, but an intent basically for now is uh, access to specific uh, content or information to the bot. So the next definition you might hear a bit during the series is the word client. Client simply refers to the bot itself. So the bot is known as the client. Um, I may refer to it as bot throughout this uh, series, but just to know if you see the word client, it does refer just to the bot itself. So a final word you might hear a bit throughout the series just for now is the word cache. Cache basically refers to stuff that your bot has stored locally in your computer's memory. So basically some kind of things that you cache would be, let's say someone uh, does a command, then you might cache that user's name, that user's profile picture. So in the future, if the bot needs to get some information about that user again, it already has it saved and doesn't need to go and try and fetch that information from Discord themselves. So it's basically Discord.js does this all for you automatically, but it's just something that you might see the keyword cache written quite a bit throughout the code. So that just sort of breaks that down for you now. So one final thing you might want to do in this episode is head back to the developer portal and head to the OAuth section and head to URL generator. So up here you want to select that it's a bot and you want to select the permissions you want. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose administrator for now. I'm going to click copy. And this is now the link you can use to invite the bot to your server. So if you go and put that link up here, you'll see there's the name of your bot and you can select the server to add it into. So I'm just going to choose alpha one. And I am human. And now your testing bot is available on your Discord server. So thank you guys for watching the first episode of the coding series. We'll get into some more exciting stuff in the next episode, but this should set you up well for being able to continue on with the series. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.